triggers are a pretty straightforward device in GimKit Creative. They are an input device in that when the player walks on the trigger, um, an input is taken into account. So triggers can do a lot um, as an input device. They are very similar to pressure plates in Minecraft. So if you look at triggers, um, we'll go to all options. There are the options that you would expect to see. When this uh, trigger platform is triggered, we can transmit on a channel. Um, we can trigger the plate when we receive something from a channel. Um, some, some more unique options, we can have a trigger delay in seconds. So if a player steps on a trigger um, and, and runs that action, we can set a delay. So that could create lots of different game dynamic opportunities. Maybe they think that the trigger does nothing, but in 10 seconds it actually does something when they're not expecting it. So there's lots of different ways you could use a delay. You can make it visible in game or invisible. So this is interesting um, in that they might stumble onto a trigger by surprise. If it's invisible in the game, it could be kind of like an invisible scavenger hunt or an invisible maze. Um, you could actually combine this with a maze that uses the same materials for floors and walls so that players can't tell where the walls of the maze are. And they could be looking for invisible triggers. It could be a pretty cool invisible maze game that you could use these different options for. You can customize which team is allowed to trigger a plate. So if you want um, to do something where players have to get to one side of the game with their team or anything like that, you can make it so that triggers are team specific. Lots of different game possibilities there. Um, you can set a limit on how many times the trigger can be activated. So it could be an expiring trigger that only gives items so many times before it's gone um, or whatever you want to set that up for. You can control the scope of that trigger. You can decide if it's active on game start, um, and you can activate and deactivate using channels. Um, you can also decide if you want player to collision to be the action that um, sets off the trigger, which makes the most sense. But if you want to just have like a channel signal from some other device be the thing that activates the trigger, you could do that too. Um, so in action, you can see these triggers are set up to increment these counters and also give me some items. So all I got to do is walk on them. I don't need to interact with a button or anything like I um, would with the button. I don't need to press enter or click on anything. I just walk over it and the trigger is set off. So there's lots of different ways to use these triggers um, and some unique features that can make for some interesting game dynamics in your GimKit creative game.